All right, we're going to go ahead and get started, and I apologize. Uh, where is Ricky Letson? Ricky not here? All right, because we should have said the blessing before we ate, but we're going to do it after we eat. Phil Hall, would you mind, you know, the, the, the resident pastor in the crowd, you, you were the first one I saw. So we're going to ask Reverend Phil Hall to say our blessing for us. Let's pray together. Hey, God, we thank you for this opportunity to gather together. We thank you for uh, football and for what it means to so many of us and for the fun of it. We pray for these guys that are here and their whole teams. We pray your blessing and safety with them this year and their coaches. Thank you for this food and for the day and for your gift of your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for him. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Um, Phil Ricky accuses us that the only reason he's on the board is so because we want him to say the blessing at the meeting. Uh, he does contribute a little bit more than that. On behalf of the Lawrence County Touchdown Club Board of Directors, I'd like to welcome you to the 2015 season. Uh, this is my fourth anniversary of the one-year term that I agreed to serve as president. But uh, we're going to keep rolling from there. I'd like to take a few moments to do a little bit of housekeeping, uh, recognize some people. Uh, first off, we'd like to recognize our game day sponsors. Uh, game day sponsors are something we started a few years ago, and these are companies and individuals that, that sponsor the actual meetings. Uh, they do the door prizes, they get some tickets, uh, it's, it's a pretty good deal for them. But game day sponsors are the Lawrence YMCA, the Clinton YMCA, First Baptist Lawrence, First Baptist Clinton, Lawrence Electric Cooperative, City of Lawrence, Founders Federal Credit Union, PRTC, Lawrence County Water and Sewer Commission, and Benson Wealth Management. Uh, I'd like to recognize them with a, with a round of applause, please. <laughs> Our other sponsors are listed on the card. I'll go through them real quick. Our gold sponsor, Palmetto Heritage Real Estate. Our silver sponsors, Bronze Derby Consulting, Law Offices of Richard Allen, Cornerstone Investment, Lawrence CPW, Henry Campbell, Lawrence County Delegation, Reynolds Dentistry, Martin Brothers Construction, the Palmetto Bank, Mike Fortune CPA. Our mill sponsors are Matt Davis State Farm, Holt Homes Enterprises, Cooper Motor Company, Farm Bureau Insurance, Sadler Hughes Apothecary, and l, &L Office Supply. We'd like to thank all of those sponsors for making Touchdown Club possible. I'd like to recognize a couple other groups. Uh, first, our Lawrence County Touchdown Club Board, if they would please stand. Uh, Ricky Ledson, Gene Simmons, Brian Reese, Sharon O'Brien, Michael Seymour, and Scott Tollison. If you could please give them a round of applause. <laughs> and this club would not be possible without the Lawrence County Chamber of Commerce. This is an umbrella uh, touchdown club that falls under the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, President and CEO Greg Alexander and I think Marlene Owens is roaming around here somewhere. Uh, we'd like to thank them. Marlene's back in the back. Also, our Lawrence County Legends. Uh, this is a group that we got together a few years ago to work on getting our speakers. Um, we, we felt like we had a wealth of knowledge and a wealth of experience, a lot of wins uh, inside of the county. Uh, so we put together this group that kind of helps us get our speakers every year. And we'd like to recognize them if they would stand when I call their name. Coach Bob Strock, Mike Owens, Coach Callie Gall, Truman Owens, King Dixon, Sandy Crookshanks, Coach Keith Richardson, Coach Bobby Ivey, and Sonny Keen. Let's give the legends some big time. That's all the housekeeping out of the way. I do want to go over our schedule for 2015. We've got a great group again, uh, a very diverse group. Today you'll hear, uh, the program says that you'll hear from Shell Dula, but Shell Dula is not here today. Uh, you will not hear from him. That is a typo. But um, you'll hear from local coaches today. You'll hear from Coach Andrew Webb, Todd Kirk, Chris Leiter, and Harold Nichols. In two weeks, you'll have Don Munson, the voice of the Clemson Tigers. 
On September 25th, you'll have Langston Moore, who is a former player and current sideline reporter for the University of South Carolina. On October 9th, you'll have Jimbo Howey, who is an NFL official. On October 23rd, you'll have our very own Coach Harold Nichols from Presbyterian College. On November 6th, uh, you will have head coach Mike Ayers from Walford College. On November 20th, our annual Clemson Carolina meeting will feature Todd Ellis and Coach Danny Ford. <clears throat> our annual banquet when we recognize the all-county team for the Touchdown Club will be on December 2nd. And always one of my favorite speakers, uh, former head coach at South Carolina State University, Willie, Willie Jeffries. So we got a good group of speakers, uh, but now we want to hear about what our local teams are, are doing, have done, and what they're preparing for for 2015. I know they don't crank things up for another week, but Coach Harold Nichols, come up and tell us about the Blue Hoes. Everybody hear me okay? I am very excited about being here today with you guys. Uh, it's kind of an air of football in the air. Very excited about uh, the 2015 football season. I want to thank the Touchdown Club. You know, this gives us an opportunity to kind of get together in fellowship and, and celebrate football here in Lawrence County. And uh, Presbyterian College and the Blue Hose, we certainly are excited to be a part of that. Um, we're very fortunate here in the county because these group of men, these coaches, Coach Liner and Coach Webb and Coach Kirk, my peers here in the county, I mean, we, we, we do it very, very well. I'm very, very proud to be a part of you guys. And, uh, Big fan of you guys on Friday nights, uh, sure am. And I uh, want to wish all you guys good luck tonight. Uh, I want to thank all the sponsors that make this happen. And uh, without your, your uh, generosity, we couldn't be here and, and celebrate football like we do each and every other week, I guess. But uh, um, I want to talk about uh, Brian Reese, our athletic director, is here with us. Introduced her earlier. I've got the best boss in America. I do. That guy right there does a great job for all the student athletes over there at PC and really appreciate him and his leadership. I stand here on behalf of Dr. Bob Staten, who was just inducted as our 18th president at Presbyterian College. We started off a new school year, started classes on Wednesday, and very excited about him and his leadership. And I think you guys just saw in the newspaper, he just, they just extended his contract, so he must be doing a really good job. He's going to be in there in two days. He gets an extension. You know? <laughs> also got Taylor Cook here with us. Taylor is a former Red Devil quarterback himself. Uh, a lot of you guys are familiar with Taylor. Taylor is uh, working with our Scotsman Club, the fundraising arm of our athletic department. Does a great job. He's got a lot of great energy and great personal skills and has added a lot to our athletic department. And first and foremost, I want to introduce my daughter Cassie Nichols here. Cassie, before I'm a coach, I'm a dad and very proud of all three of my kids. I was able to get Cassie out of school today to come over here and, sp and spend some time with us. So, you know, we've got a, a, a great schedule this, this year. Uh, we've got, uh, we opened up a week from Saturday so on September the 5th against Miami, Ohio. That's uh, home of Ben Roethlisberger, the Pittsburgh Steelers quarterback, and they call it the cradle of coaches up there. So I'll be up there, uh, kickoffs at 3.30. It's on ESPN, so you guys here at home, if you don't make the trip up to Ohio, can watch us on TV. Um, hopefully some of that good coaching will rub off on me up there in the cradle of coaches and, and uh, lead us to a good year. Second game, we go to Charlotte uh, on the road, to our second FBS team that we'll play this year, and they're in Conference USA. Um, so that'll be another challenge. And then our first home game will be September the 19th uh, at 7 p.m. under the lights. Uh, we got a lot of really positive feedback last year from our night game, especially in September, because it's a daggum hot out there at 2 o'clock. So we'll get a little relief from the heat. And uh, we had some special wins last year up underneath the lights last year. So hopefully it'll bring us some good luck. Um, one thing about the Big South Conference, the conference that we're in, you know, I really felt last year that we really took a step forward <coughs> as a conference as a whole. Last year, RPI, which is a, an index that... Uh, they grant uh, playoff teams, and they kind of rank uh, teams and conferences. Uh, and last year, the Big South Conference, we were the second-ranked 
uh, conference as a whole, RPI in the country behind the team, behind that conference, North Dakota State, and they won the last four national championships. So uh, we were 24 and seven as a group against outside FCS competition. We were, as a conference, we were eight and two against the Southern Conference last year as a whole. And uh, so I really felt like that we really took a big jump as, as a conference. We got two, two bids to the playoffs, which was uh, first in our conference's history. So we really come light years. Uh, we're very, very proud to be a part of that in uh, our peer schools. Um, last year, I really felt like that we kind of took a step forward. I've told a lot of people here in the off season, you know, that you know, when I first became the head coach of PC, the biggest thing that I wanted to do was be able to field a competitive football team. And, you know, I knew it was going to be a, a journey that we were going to go on, and uh, I felt like that, you know, after a couple of years, we were able to do that and be competitive week in and week out. And then, you know, the next step was become relevant. And well, in order to become relevant, you got to get some pretty significant wins underneath your belt and be in the SES comp, uh, conversation here in the state of South Carolina. I felt like we were able to do that last year, where we're relevant again. And, you know, when you start talking about SES schools here in the state, you know, Presbyterian is, is definitely involved in that. Uh, you know, the next challenge we have as a program and as a team facing 2015 is, to, is a chance to become consistent, you know, and, you know, was that a flash in the pan, you know, uh, um, you know, and that's the thing that we, we, we struggle with and we, and we have to fight against is, you know, to make sure that we continue on an upward climb as a program. And I've got a really, really good football team coming back. Yeah, I've got a lot of starters back on defense. I think that's going to be a, a strength of our team. Um, we've got to become a little bit more consistent offensively. And, uh, you know, that's what we've been working for the last three and a half weeks. If hard work has anything to do with it, I think we'll be, we'll be in pretty good shape because our kids have had a good offseason, uh, both in the classroom and on the field and uh, in the weight room over the last three or four months. So we're really excited about getting the 2015 football season started. I'm, I'm your biggest fan. There's nothing like Friday Night Lights, man. There's nothing like high school football. I, I tell our kids all the time, you know, I guarantee you a pregame meal for us on Saturdays, the topic of conversation with all of them is how their high school team did that, that Friday night before. So enjoy this time. Enjoy this time that you guys have uh, competing for your high schools and uh, I'm your biggest fan. I check all your scores every Saturday morning. I wish all the coaches and athletes good luck tonight. Uh, if y'all get a chance to come out and support the Blue Hose on Saturday afternoons in the fall, we certainly appreciate it. Thank you to the Touchdown Club. Glad to be here and uh, appreciate y'all so much. Thank you. Appreciate that, Coach. And next up, we have Coach Todd Kirk. Lawrence Academy Crusaders. Oh, I thought I was going to go last. I thought I was going to go last. You never know. I'm going to be here for a very short time. You said you were going to be here for a very short time. I hope to. Anyway, thank you all so much for having me. Make sure you heard that. I apologize. I'm long winded at times. Thank you so much. You're right. We do have a good crowd here today. I thank the Touchdown Club so much, and I try to thank them more and more. When I grew up, that was a long time ago, um, in Virginia, we never had anything like this. Never anything. Not at the end of the year, especially at times communities have the end of the year, but we, Lord, we're every, every other week, and at the end of the year here, I appreciate it, you know. And the folks who come here and sit every um, two weeks and listen to us talk boring, you all make this place. I appreciate that. I appreciate it. And you young guys, wherever you're from here, be thankful for this. Be thankful. It doesn't happen all the time. Um, you know, we went down to Charleston this past weekend on Friday. Didn't go well for us, and uh, it's close for a while, but uh, didn't have numbers, and they pulled away from us. They had a better, better football team that evening. But as, as I went down, I was thinking about all across the, the state, this is what's going on, and all across our country. To me, this is the favorite time of the year for me, and I will, and I share that saying, I will travel a lot. I will. My son's at Maryville College. He landed up there. Uh, he's coaching uh, linebackers and uh, he's equipment manager. He's probably more of the equipment manager than he is the linebacker. Manager. <laughs> but anyway, he got he, he's up there, so I'll leave here Friday nights a lot, going wherever he's at. And whenever he's not there, I'll be going to Knoxville. And if, and if they're not there, I'll be going somewhere else. But I, I love this time of year. Um, and after ball games, you think, wow, wow, you're worn out, and you know how you drive, but man. After a ball game, I'm a long way from going to sleep. Mm -hmm. And I think these other coaches are the same way. You're a long way from going to sleep. It really is. And coffee, just you just start drinking coffee at that time. <laughs> this is a special time of year. 
And I say that because to me, high school football, it's the last hard thing a kid can do. It really is. It's the last hard thing a high school kid can do. And I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I'm thankful now for the heat that comes. I'm not, I wasn't thankful when we were in it the last three weeks, but I'm thankful now. It makes you, it, it, it will bring you out. It, it will call you, it will call you out. It really, really will. It is a hard game, and I've said this a lot. If it's not hard, you're not doing it right. right. You're really not. It's supposed to be hard. It is supposed to be hard. You're supposed to dread it. You're supposed to dread it sometimes. You really are. That's what makes men out of us, and it makes you grind on. Anyway, we started off here. We started off and had a good uh, preseason. We didn't get as much work as we wanted because of the heat. We had to, uh, uh, I guess, not do some things. You just have to simply adjust. Uh, at our at our place at the academy, we're always fighting numbers. We had a low number this year, uh, especially get kids that had played. And we come through the um, come through two a days, and we you know we start a week early. I think Clint may have started a week early, or same week we do. But we went to a team we'd beaten last year, and I felt going I felt good going down to uh, Coastal Christian or Charleston. Uh, what is it, Coastal Christian? I got to get my name right here. Went down and started the game. And at halftime, it's 14 to six, and I felt good. I still knew that they had 18 players on their sideline, and I had 13 on mine. I knew that, and that's a big deal when it's hot. And the third quarter, they came out and uh, went down the field and scored. And I said, "We we may be done. We may be finished here." And um, again, anywhere in Carolina on a Friday night, it's hot in the winter, you know. So anyway, we're playing. And uh, we respond and get a score. We put it to 12, 20 to 12 and um, kick the ball back to them. And we get a stop. And it's 20 to 12. And we're driving. And it's late in the third quarter. And I'm surprised. I am surprised at where we are because I didn't think we had enough gas. And had a turnover. And when you're, when you're limited with players and um, uh, players and really the, the elements, your margin for error is small. And it was small, and really they returned that for a touchdown and put it to 28 to 12, and we weren't close from then on out. We didn't have the gas to come back. I, I appreciated the effort. Now, in eight-man football, you're going to hear a big numbers always. It's going to be like arena football. We've got a team coming to us this week, uh, tonight Faith Christian out of Somerville. They're coming up, and <laughs> let me say this as far as eight-man, we travel to the other side of the earth to play football. <laughs> and I, when I say the bottom of the earth, I'm thinking anything below 95. When you go down there, that's Charleston and, and all those places. So anyway, they're coming to our place tonight. And um, we've had a good week of practice. And again, hey, it's been hot this week. We worked them to death, and, and uh, we did a little, probably did a little bit more than we should have, but I feel like we need to be prepared. So we're looking for that tonight. And uh, Hopefully we'll uh, respond well and play well. I want to introduce some guys I brought here tonight. And you know I got ADD and I don't take medicine. That's a problem. <laughs> and I always write them down. I think I can name these players in front of me. Here. I, I've got captains and I've got Jack Kerr. The captains are seniors. They just uh, they, they just voted in, but Jack came because he had 17 tackles. He doesn't look like a guy that would make 17 tackles, but he did last Friday night. Um, he's an all-effort guy. I always tell everybody around school he brushes, he brushes his hair with a rock every day. And if you could come to school every day and see if you would agree with me. <laughs> but anyway, I want to introduce Jack Stand Up. He plays linebacker for me and played mostly. I put his hand on the ground and uh, told him to shoot the A gap a lot and ended up with a lot of plays. Thank you, Jack. Uh, also, let me introduce the captains. Peyton Robertson, uh, Stand Up. Peyton, Nate Martin, Stand Up. Josh Irwin, Stand Up. And Ryan Holmes. All these guys did a tremendous job. Matter of fact, on Tuesday, we waited longer than we ever have, boys and young guys, to vote for captains. It was a little bit hard for me to put that through, but this past Tuesday, we voted captains, and those guys came out on top. And uh, I couldn't ask any more from them. They give a lot and do a lot, and they're a fine young man. I really, really, really appreciate you know, what they've done. Hopefully, we'll have a victory. You know, on Saturday, interestingly, I, uh, I catch up on everybody, what everybody has done on Saturday mornings and you hear the scores of things and I heard, I heard Clinton had gotten behind 14 to nothing in the first quarter with a new coach and I'm thinking how big is the bus they were throwing him under? <laughs> in, at, at the end of the first quarter how big was that bus uh, that they were throwing him under down there? Can you imagine? But you fought back congratulations on that coach. All right. Thank you guys. I appreciate you all. All right, next up, Lawrence Raiders, Coach Chris Liner. I just want to reiterate just briefly uh, what the other coaches said about 
um, the touchdown club and what it means. I know, again, I told you this last year, but I, I had the great fortune to go to the Greenwood County Touchdown Club numerous times as a high school athlete. And uh, you know, whether it was deserved or not, I don't know, but they chose me a few times. So, um, And it was always a, an experience. And I can remember just going back and, and we got a little T-shirt and I'd wear that T-shirt to school on Monday and just be awful proud that somebody thought enough of us or or of me at that time to, to, to put forth some effort to recognize them. And, and uh, I know these guys feel the same way. So we certainly appreciate all of y'all um, that makes that happen. I don't, I don't know all the lists that Billy, Billy read out earlier, but I know there's a lot of people it takes to, to make this work. And I know sometimes um, yeah, you, you don't get a pat on the back enough to, to, to uh, how much you mean to, to what we try to do um, and the support that you give us behind the scenes. And I know a lot of you, that's not why you do it. You know, you do it because you care for the kids. And, and that's first and foremost the most important thing. And uh, just want to briefly talk about our, our guys. I brought our four captains uh, here this year uh, for the first meeting. Um, I don't know if Coach Ivy and, and you guys elected captains, but, but we went back and we've either started a new tradition or, or, or going back to an old one. Um, but, you know, our players chose these four guys. If you stand up, Chuck Johnson, um, Thomas Jones, Keontae Boyd, um, and Toby Jackson. And uh, I mean, you can see pretty quick, uh, we're, we're not devoid of talent. Um, these guys could roll up with Harold uh, in two weeks to, to Miami of Ohio, and he probably wouldn't miss a beat inserting any of them in there. I got so, room on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> guys are huge. We, we've got a great senior class. We've got 28 seniors. Um, you know, certainly these four are, are ultra important. You know, Toby plays quarterback. Thomas is playing quarterback and safety. Keontae plays linebacker and tight end. Chuck plays running back and linebacker. And uh, uh, this past Friday night, we were able to, to go up and, 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 well, first off, we, we uh, uh, played a really tough preseason deal, which I know really don't amount a hill of beans, but um, we, we did that by design. I had a lot of people calling and, or seeing me on the road and saying, what are you doing going to Charleston to play Goose Creek? Don't you know they're going to kill y'all? Uh, what are you going up to play Daniel for? You know, heck, that's like playing Clinton. I mean, come on, that's a good 3A football program. You know, they, they've got as many banners as most people. And, you know, uh, got a little grief over that. And I'm sitting there thinking, well, what do you want me to do? Go schedule, you know, uh, schedule people that aren't going to make you any better. But um, we played a really tough uh, uh, preseason, and I think it's really helped us. Um, Friday night, for the first time, honestly, since I've been at Lawrence, we play like you're supposed to. And uh, we beat Daniel in the Jamboree 28 to nothing, and I took a knee on the four-yard line three straight times to end the game. Had a field goal block, didn't get it on fourth and goal from the two. Um, it could have been really bad, and uh, but we clicked. And, you know, that is a – and all the coaches can attest to this – that is a really good feeling when you see – uh, the product of what you've worked so hard for. I mean, again, it's not a real game. It's not a regular season game. Um, but it was a great sign of confidence for our guys and our program in itself to, to, to go against a team that had a kid with the last name Sweeney on it and the last name Venables on it and James Earl's son on it and Terrence My I could go on and on and on, list names that you all know their child was lining up against your, chi your child. And uh, that was really cool to see. Um, we start off tonight with Belton Honey Path. They have eight starters back uh, defensively, and I think seven or eight starters back offensively. Um, again, I, I told Mike this on the radio the other day. Uh, they're, they're a class program. Um, you know, if you go and check out their facilities and just everything that uh, that they put into their athletics and their football program, and just the the amount of emphasis and the amount of importance that's placed in in, in those two things, it, it's amazing. Um, I've told a lot of coaches that I've met over the years, you know, young guys starting out at a, a Lada or a small school somewhere, hey, you need to go visit Belton Honey Path because they do it right there. Um, they, they got a lot of good things going, a lot of community pride. Hey, we made, I don't know how much money we made at our JV game last, last night, but it was packed. Um, and there were a lot of them wearing red and blue. Um, so, you know, but that's, that's awesome. And, and again, uh, that, that's what we have here too as well. Um, I think we got a chance to be really good this year, honestly. Um, we, we've come a long way working on the little things that it takes to, to, uh, 
to, to make you good. Um, I, I sent Andrew a, a message the other night, Coach Webb, I'm sorry, Andrew, um, uh, congratulating them on their victory, and I wanted to tell him, Lipbo, you need to retire right now. <laughs> You're one and oh, man. You'll be the winningest Clinton coach ever. Um, but, but that was awesome, guys. I'm proud of all of y'all for doing that. And I hope, I honestly hope y'all are undefeated when y'all roll into Lawrence for two reasons. They would make a heck of a lot more money. But, um, but me, I really, we pull for y'all every week and hope y'all do well because y'all 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 do it right. And, uh, and that's an exciting game. For those of y'all that don't know, we've agreed to move the Lawrence Clinton game to week one next year um, just to really create some, some excitement. I know that don't have anything to do with this year. But uh, you know, I thought I'd throw that out there because I've had a bunch of people ask me. But we're excited about this year. We've got a great staff. Um, you know, Dr. Strickland and Ms. Bryan have been unbelievable. Uh, Mark Freeze has worked his butt off this summer, believe it or not. And uh, I mean, he's been out there power washing, and we've painted everything you can paint. Uh, we've been weed eating with our hands. I mean, it's. We, we've tried our best to, to make our place the best it can possibly be. Um, and there's been a lot that's gone in that. We've hired a couple new coaches this year. Um, we hired Zach Norman, who's coaching our linebackers this year. And he is the same Norman of the one that plays for the Carolina Panthers. And we were able to get Barry Moses back into the mix, who works for CPW, working with us again this year. And those are two really good, good role models for our kids. Uh, unbelievable people, but you know, if it wasn't for for uh, Ms. Bryant, Dr. Strickland, and, 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 and our school board allowing us to bring quality people in to mentor our kids, then we wouldn't have a chance. I mean, that's just bottom line. We would not have a chance. I could be Vince Lombardi, we'd win one game. Um, so I appreciate you guys very much for, for giving us that opportunity. But we're excited about this year. We're excited about seeing all of y'all. Um, we've got a chance to be really good again. Um, we've, got, we've got the players to do it. And I think we're starting to learn the 90% the that's between their ears that matters. And, uh, you know, that, that's some things that we're, we're certainly excited about tonight to see where that all plays out. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you so much for what you do. We appreciate you. Appreciate that, Coach. All right, 1-0. and New coach from the Clinton Red Devils, Coach Andrew Webb. Thank y'all for having us. Uh, it's been a while since I've been to the Touchdown Club, but uh, I always look forward to coming, eating on Fridays, and, and seeing everybody. We got off to a good start this past week. We won and know. Uh, we were down 14 nothing at the end of the first quarter. It's not really where you want to be, but at the same time, when you're down 14 nothing in the first quarter, you're not really thinking, "Oh my goodness, we're down 14 nothing." You're thinking, "How the heck are we going to score or stop somebody?" So. Uh, <laughs> The one good thing about this past week was we found out a lot about our football team very early. You know, we were down 14 nothing and nobody blinked. Uh, they kept fighting. They never stopped. You know, we, we had some people go down with cramps, and the next person that we called on stepped up. So we found out a lot about our football team. And at the end of the day, you know, as a head coach, you, you can lay your head down at night and sleep good knowing that <coughs> the people you're putting out there on the field are going to give you everything they got. So we, we sure found out a lot about our football team very early. Uh, I brought four guys here with me. Th these are actually our players of the week uh, from this past week. You guys just stand up on a card. We got Daniel Moore. Daniel Moore played uh, H back for us. We just moved Daniel to inside linebacker within the last two weeks, and he has done a fantastic job for us. He made a couple of big plays for us on defense, and he uh, led the way for us running the ball a lot of the night. So we're real proud of Daniel. Daniel is a, a senior. Uh, Donovan Blackman. Donovan had three touchdowns this past week. We get into a little what we call ginger package. We we'll snap in the ball, and uh, it's a real good short yardage offense for us. He also made a fantastic catch on fourth down in the corner of the end zone in the third quarter to give us a 22-14 lead. So, uh, Donovan Blackman, another senior player of the week. V. Thompson. V was kind of an all-around player of the week. Uh, he ended up he, he was pushing 100 yards in kickoff returns. He had an interception that he ran back to the four-yard line on defense. Uh, he scored a touchdown on offense. He, he played fantastic. And he played the entire game. So he, he played every play of defense. He played offense. He played special teams. And uh, he, he never went down with a cramp. So whatever he did to take care of himself, I sure appreciate it. <laughs> and, uh, we're real proud of V. And our fourth player of the week is John Barnes. We have uh, a player of the week. We call our Next Man Up Award. 
And I, I, I don't know how many plays John Barnes thought he was going to play going into last week versus AC4, but when his number was called in the fourth quarter, he was ready. He was ready. And uh, he, he was on the field for some of the most important plays of the game on offense, and he, he never blinked an eye. So uh, our coaches kind of unanimous, unanimously voted him player of the week. And uh, we're proud of all these guys. And, you know, like I said, when you put guys like this on the field, that they, they give you everything they got, you can lay your head down at night and go to sleep. You guys, thank you. Real quick, our football team, you know, we went, we went through the preseason. We did, we did a lot of good things. We did a lot of things we had to correct. Uh, the, the biggest thing we're trying to do right now is the football program. It doesn't have anything to do with X's and O's. We're trying to get better. Uh, we're, we're trying to get to where every time we step, step out on the field, we think we can win. And sometimes there's, uh, all the time, there's a great expectation that comes in Clinton of winning. And we know that. We know the importance of making a good first impression uh, for our fans. We did that this past week. But most importantly, what, what we try to teach these guys is that sometimes, Quite frankly, it doesn't matter what anybody outside of that room thinks. As long as these 55 guys that put these pads on, these 11 coaches that show up every day, as long as those guys think we can win, then we got a shot. And uh, they, they've really done a good job of that. And just, you know, real quick, new offense, you know, whatever is, it's, it's whatever we got to do to win is what we're going to do. You know, the biggest thing that I, I think has made a difference right now in our program is there, there are six pictures that hang in our team room. They don't have any words on them, they're just six pictures. Our guys see them every day. And in my mind, I don't know if they see it, I see it. I'm starting to see them take on the, the personality of these six pictures. And the first picture is a picture of a bell. And when the bell rings, you gotta answer it. Doesn't matter if we got a kickoff, kickoff return, offense, defense, doesn't matter. When the bell rings, let's go. The second picture of them is a picture of Muhammad Ali standing over Frazier. You know, the bell means something different to everybody. Are you going to choose to lay down when the bell rings to come back out for the second quarter down 14-0? Or are you going to come back out of the corner fighting? And uh, that's something that I, I can see them start to take on. The bell, when the bell rings, we're ready to answer. doesn't matter if it's going good or bad. The third picture is a picture of this old guy putting on his gloves. He's dirty, and he's about to go to work. It doesn't matter how you feel. It doesn't matter sometimes what you got going on. When it's time to go to work, it's time to go to work. That's very true to life, and it's very true to our football team. And we're starting to eliminate some of our excuses. Don't have time for them. If you put your gloves on, we got to go to work. The fourth picture is a picture of the energy bus. I don't know if you guys have ever read John Gordon's book, The Energy Bus, the picture of the energy bus. Everybody on our team has got to be going in the same direction, putting off the same vibe, putting off the same happy faces. Everybody's going in the same direction. And they're starting to do that. You know, we've, had to, we've had some kind of eliminate themselves. We don't have anybody on our team that's pulling us down. It makes a big difference when you have 55 people going in the same direction. That's what that energy bus represents. The, ne the next picture is a picture of a pack of lions. And we want to surround ourselves with people on the same mission as us. And we're starting to do that as well. When we go to practice, we go to practice on a mission. When we go to school every day, we're coming to school on a mission. When we go to play, we're going to play with a mission. We're not just wandering aimlessly. We're on a mission of what we're trying to do. And I can see those guys starting to take that on. And finally, this is something that we're trying to get to. is a picture of Rocky Balboa after he beats Yvonne Drago. And he's celebrating in the ring. He's got an American flag on him. And his two trainers, Duke and Paulie, are there with him, kind of holding him up. And what that represents to us is a champion was once a contender who just refused to give up. And a champion can't get there by himself. It took Paulie and Duke to get Rocky to where he was. And although Rocky might be the heavyweight champ with, with his belt and his flag on him, he couldn't have done it by himself. Nobody cared who got the credit, and uh, that's, that's what we're trying to develop amongst our young men. We all got to be going in the same direction. Our ultimate goal is to be a champion, and, and we're going to find a way to get there as long as nobody cares who gets the credit. I know my name might be in the paper. I'm a young coach. I'm one another, whatever. You know, that ain't going to last forever. That ain't going to last forever. But we have a group of assistant coaches that have done a fantastic job with our young men that are working their butts off. We are proud of them. We got a lot of people around our school, Ms. Taylor, Coach Barnes, they do a lot of wonderful things for us. And uh, we're very thankful we have a big opponent tonight, Greer. We lost to them twice last year. We're very familiar with them. They are a great measuring stick for us as a program. Uh, the 
one thing I'm most excited about tonight is these guys are going to be able to see Clinton and Greer the way I was able to see it as a player. You know, let, coming into this game 1-0, uh, Greer being ranked in the top five in every 3A preseason poll, I know what that stadium is going to look like tonight. I know what it's going to look like. I'm excited for these guys. And, uh, our whole goal is to be able to get to the second half with a chance to finish. If we can get, if we can get to the second half with a chance to finish, I know what these guys have going through their mind, and hopefully we can find a way uh, to win the day. So thank you guys for having us. We appreciate what all you do for football in Lawrence County. And we'll see you guys next time. All right, as you can see, we have not only